Hey y'all, welcome back to Small Town Southern Wife. Today I'm going to be making my cornbread for Thanksgiving and I wanted to share that recipe with y'all. Plus I've got some bowls here I wanted to show y'all and tell you a little bit about how old they are and the history on them of what I'm using to make my cornbread in. And I've used this bowl for biscuits a time or two, but we, uh, we found out some history on this bowl and I think it's real interesting. It dates back to about 150 years. And I imagine uh, it's fed a lot of people over the years. But uh, you can see about years ago, it belonged to a Grandma Holland, Travis's great, great granny. And uh, she would feed the people out of the field. She'd be cooking while they were out working in the field. And then, uh, so they'd all have something to eat when they got through. And I imagine she made cornbread in it back then. But you can see somebody took a log and this was actually carved out of, out of a log. And you can see the indentions in there where they sit and carved that log out. I think you can see it good right there. And then when, when she wind up moving in with Cracker Grandma, over the years, and Cracker Grandma would be Travis's great, great granny. Let me see if I got that right, no. Holland was his great, great granny, and Cracker Grandma would have been his great granny, and Grandma Grace was his granny. But anyway, it went from ha uh, Granny Holland, from her to Cracker Grandma, and then it went from them to Emery wind up with it, and now Travis has it. But anyway, it's got a long history behind this bowl and I just think it's neat and I'm gonna use it in my recipe today. And then this bowl belonged to his uh, Granny Bennett and she used to make the tiniest little biscuits in this bowl. And I remember back years ago, she'd have her a tea towel on it. And I've got one right here, but the way she had it, she would take her tea towel and she had that tea towel with a lasket that would wrap around it and keep it tied to tied on there with the lasket and hold it down and whatever she'd have left she would uh keep in that bowl with that tea towel that she had made for this bowl and she made a lot of little biscuits and when you went to her house she'd say you tell her you don't want nothing to eat she'd say well get you a biscuit anyway so you can eat from so you don't get hungry eat from not getting hungry. That's what she'd always say. And back then, you know, she would keep them in the cabinet. She would keep a platter and she'd keep her leftover biscuits in the uh, cabinet next to the refrigerator on the corner. And you could go in the cabinet and she'd always have a fresh biscuit in that cabinet. But this is the little bowl that she used. But I just wanted to share these two bowls with y'all because they've got a lot of history behind them. And people don't realize how years ago how hard that this bowl right here was to make and it has fed a lot of people and even people that worked in the field that we all need to appreciate nowadays that they worked hard back then see the indentions We'll cook our cornbread in it today and see how it turns out. So y'all come along and I'll show you how we're gonna do it. Okay, y'all, here's the, all the ingredients. I've got them set out and put out so I can show you exactly what it's gonna take to make your cornbread for your dressing. Over here, we have the Martha White Self-Rising Cornmeal Mix. That's the kind we use. We've always used the Martha White and make sure you get the self-rising. One stick of melted butter, one egg, two and a half cups of milk, one fourth cup of sugar. And then over here in your iron skillet, everybody knows you gotta have an iron skillet to make a good pot of cornbread. And in there you have a half a stick of butter that you're gonna put in the oven 
and get it good and warm and melted before you get ready to put your cornmeal mix in. Once you get your cornbread mixed up, you're gonna take it and pour it in that iron skillet, but you gotta melt that butter first so it'll be good and coated and uh, hot and ready to go when you get your uh, meal mixed up and ready to pour in there. But that's what you'll use to grease your pan with. And then that pan, let me tell you that too also, this is a 10 inch iron skillet. And this recipe that we have measured out uh, cooks great in a 10 inch iron skillet. And what you'll do is you'll preheat your oven at 450. And then at 450, it'll take you 19 minutes to get this recipe cooked. Some ovens may vary, you have to keep a close eye on it. But for this measurements of this uh, recipe, it's usually around 19 minutes. It's what it takes to get it good and uh, lightly brown the way you want it. So let me mix it up and show you how we're gonna get it started. Okay, what you're gonna add to your bowl first, and this is that old bowl I was telling y'all about, and I'm sure you can see the grooves in it. But anyway, you're gonna add your two and one fourth cup of cornmeal mix. And then you're gonna add your, and then you'll add your butter to your cornmeal. Then it's already cooled off. And then you're gonna add your milk two and a half cups of milk. And then you're gonna add your egg. And then add your sugar, your one fourth cup of sugar. and then just mix well. And see why I like using this big bowl, how, do, how big it is and how good it does when you have a lot of liquid in your recipe. Just mix it real good. Get all the sides clean. Okay, then we're gonna have to set this to the side so we can get our skillet out. Just move that over there a little bit. I'm gonna take that and take that out. And then we're fixing to pour it in our skillet. We've got our butter melted. Then take your melted butter and coat the skillet all the way up to the top of the edge with the butter. To make sure it don't stick. And then we're gonna take our cornmeal mix and just Put it in there. Well, spilt some. Let me get that up. And then we're going to put our, our skillet in the oven and we're gonna bake it 
at 450 for 19 minutes. Okay, we'd like just a few more minutes of get, before we're able to take our cornbread out of the oven. And what I've got right here, I got me a large placemat. Travis got these a long time ago, and I use those. They make good placemats to put on your counter so the skillets don't burn your countertop. And then once it cools for a few minutes, we're gonna put it on this platter right here. I'm gonna use that platter to, to put it on once it cools down enough to whenever you're able to take it out of the skillet. But we're just sitting here waiting on the timer to go off. Up oh, there it is, so let me get it out of the oven. Look at there, how pretty. Okay, and we'll just let it sit there till it gets a little bit cooler. And then we'll be able to take it and dump it and we'll turn this over actually and use it to put the, the iron, the, turn the iron skillet over on it and use this as a platter. But let it cool some and we'll take it out. Okay, now that I've got it cool enough where I can touch it, I'm gonna put it on here and flip it over and hope for the best. Let's see if it comes out. There's, there she is. It come out pretty good. I've got a few little crumbs that fell off and right there, just a little bit. But once it cools, just a few more minutes, I'll show y'all how where I cut it. Okay, I've got this side right here cut. I'm gonna just go all the way through it. Turn it this way. And it could be a little bit cooler, but I just wanted to go ahead and show y'all why it's hot. And if you wanted to cut them smaller, you could. Okay, right there is that little piece that didn't want to, that stuck just a little bit. And it was supposed to be for dressing, but I'll have to wind up making one more. So I've got to try this. And show y'all how pretty it is. Look at that steam coming out. Let's set this to the side. still see the steam coming out of it but we're gonna take us a little bit of butter and put it on the top and let it melt and that's how we make cornbread
Okay, y'all, I just wanted to get back on here and show you one last piece of how I cut another piece of it. And this is actually what we're gonna eat for supper with some uh, chicken and some navy beans, I believe, and a little bit of onion. That's what's gonna be for supper tonight. But once you make this, you better hide your cornbread because it won't last till Thanksgiving for your dressing. So once you get it made, you better hide it, especially if you have a lot of people in your house, a house full of kids, because it won't last long. But anyway, if you like our video, please like, share, and subscribe, and give us a thumbs up. And we appreciate y'all watching. Until next time, see ya. If this bowl could talk, I bet it'd have a story to tell. Don't y'all think so? I bet it would have a story, a lot of stories to tell. And it made that pretty cornbread after being probably 150 years old. <laughs>